Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Philippine stock market wrap up. So this time we will discuss what happened uh, in March 2021. So yes, we do understand there's still one more um, trading date tomorrow, but uh, we opted to do this uh, stock market wrap up today, so we so we can upload uh, this um, webinar uh, before the long uh, weekend. Okay, so yeah, so let's get started. Let's get started. So. First, we will discuss what happened in the month of March, and then we will discuss what do we watch out for in the month of April, and then we will discuss both our long-term picks and our traders playbook picks that we have. So for our traders playbook picks, we have a couple of uh, new ones for you. So yes, first let's summarize what happened in the month of March. So in the month of March, the PSEI went down by 249 points or 3.7%. Um, to close at um, 6,545.55. So yeah, so again, we have one more trading day. Tomorrow, this is uh, webinar was uh, started at around March 30. We have March 31 for tomorrow. But nevertheless, the, uh, there is a huge uh, possibility that we will end down in the month of March. So why? So what made the market go down? So yeah, COVID-19 cases continued to rise, reaching as high as over 10,000 yesterday. So the surgical lockdowns, the closure of non-essential businesses, and resumed mobility restrictions weighed heavily on investor sentiment. Right? So basically, that's what made the market you know, go lower um, for the month of March, right? Mostly COVID-19 cases, which caused what we're facing right now in NCR, which is ECQ. Um, but what supported the market? Um, keep in mind, uh, yesterday, Monday, the market could have easily gone down, right? But it did not. It actually went up by nearly 1%. And we'll tell you why, right? This is why. The pres President Duterte is signing create bill into law, okay? So when we will discuss later on, the impact of the create law, right? We actually will discuss also what do we think or how it will impact um, the earnings of the companies moving forward. And of course, right now, we, we began already the vaccination of, of people from COVID-19. In terms of te technical analysis, this it's a pretty straightforward occurrence right when we broke down the key the previously key support level of six six what we, we we saw a bounce afterwards right so the market went as low as six three if i'm not mistaken and then it went at over so it traded over so devil so definition rsi's rsi's below 30 and the ps the ps rebounded right but it failed to go above six six again march 30 today it could rebound tomorrow right but in terms of what happened as of today, the market is failing to break above its previous key support now, resistance level of 6.6 that supports the polarity principle that the previous support now becomes a resistance. So since there's hesitation that to go above the 6.6 level, it suggests that the bears, the bears are still in control, right? So what do, in terms of technical analysis, what does it tell us? What does it recommend? So we should still wait for a pro proper reversal before entering, right? So to be safe, entering above six nine is a is a good recommendation based for, so based solely from technical analysis, right? So next support levels after six six is six four and six one eighty. So this is the monthly chart, right? If you take a look at the monthly chart, you will see there that the mark after breaking down. That's the 2020 breakdown, right? So it's still failing to go up back above that um, trend line, right? So this tells us that we are still not out of the woods in terms of technical analysis. So now we will discuss the create law, right? So basically, previous uh, prior to the approval of the create law, Corporate income tax was around 30% for both the, the, the big companies and the smaller ones. The CREATE law 
enables or lowers the corporate income tax of uh, bigger companies from 30 to 25 percent and for smaller businesses from 30 to 20 percent right and then you will see there the progression for the big companies and then after 2022 it will become 24 and then until 2027 where it will become 20 percent so the create law actually retroactive siya apply eh? so from july 2020 right so what do we think we think it will have a 7.1 percent outright earnings per share boost this year right so we know there were vetoed provisions but the meet the key goal of the create law which is to lower the corporate income tax was passed was signed into law that's why there was um a battle between the bears and the bulls last monday or yesterday because of the approval of the create law and the uh, ecq uh, restrictions okay so yeah so you will see this slide and i was also mentioned for those who are listening that the president has actually signed the create law but sub it was subject to the vetoed provisions as follows like the increasing the vat exempt threshold on sale of real property sale of residential lots worth 2.5 and below uh, and, res and other residential dwellings 4.2 million and below uh, the president also vetoed the 90-day period for the processing of general tax refunds the redundant incentives for domestic enterprises on account of unfairness there's also the provision granting the president the power to exempt any investment promotion agency from the reform he actually vetoed that one and the automatic approval of applications for incentives in that if not acted upon within 20 days from date of submission of application so you'll see there those were the vetoed provisions but the you know again the main goal of the create was lower corporate income tax and it was passed basically these vetoed provisions actually were supposed to be the ba if bababa yung corporate income tax bababa yung government revenues so what what was actually vetoed was some source of government revenues moving forward but they vetoed that no so very interesting development nevertheless again 7.1 percent outright um earnings boost this year is the benefit of um the create law in terms that's our view and on the vaccine timeline i will also mention here you will see uh in this slide the by yesterday march 29 there were there were one one million delivered um sinovac and then we you will see here in the second quarter of the year merong 11.5 million um vaccine deliveries expected and on, on the third quarter 20 million um now actually on, on the third quarter it's 13.5 million on july in july and then 20 million in august and then another 20 million in september that's a target and then on the fourth quarter it's 20 million each in october november and december okay and then there's a target vaccination where in april and may 500,000 to 1 million per week and then from june to july 2 million to 3 million per week so that's the vaccine timeline the status of the rollout and vaccine deliveries so just to give just to give us you know a heads up because at the end of the day we, we can put up restrictions but vaccine is still the the key to limiting cases severe cases if i may if i may clear myself so what do we watch out for in april 2021 So of course, lockdown measures and PH. I believe on Saturday there will be an announcement whether NCR Plus will be extended. We are seeing news that some um, health experts, even part of the IATF and even part of the DOH, is recommending an extension of ECQ in NCR Plus. Okay. So of course, in other parts of the country, most are in MGCQ already. Uh, but nevertheless, it's something to watch out for in terms of announcement because that could dampen um, market sentiment further, or at least that could cap gains, right? That could limit us to go and reach 7K in the short term. Of course, there are also economic data for the Philippines on April 6, inflation. Inflation is also a must-watch data, especially 4% up yung inflation for the past couple of months for the for the for the month of January and February. And of course, OF remittances, we've been seeing resilient. Or remittances so far, even in a pandemic. So this is something interesting to watch if it could be sustained. 
And then on the US, there's um, US job supports on Friday and then interest rate decision on April 29. Why is it important? Because in the US, um, if they were already seeing higher inflation expectation, that could um, expedite their um, interest rate cycle. That could result in higher bond yields and that could result to less premium in equity. And that could result to um, correction of growth stocks. Right, especially in the US. And then on the global, also manufacturing data on April 1, and then interest rate decision in EU on April 22, and then in Japan on April 27. And then very quickly, of course, after the full year 2020, earning, 2020 earnings, what to watch out for is the first quarter corporate earnings, both in the Philippines and the US. In the Philippines, though, Probably you'll only see banks earnings or even I believe what is scheduled is AEV on the 28th. So nevertheless, um, corporate earnings will start in the latter part of April. Again, what's important is the guidance, right? And just to tell you the guidance of companies um, in, in, in their 2020 full year call last month or earlier this month. So they could not yet give the guidance given the current restrictions because uh, of course demand is still um, heavily hinged on the restrictions, right? So they could not get yet the guidance. So we're hoping sometime by the end of this month and next month, they will give a more, uh, they will give a clear guidance given the current situation. And of course, COVID-19 vaccine related news. So we showed you the, this, we showed and mentioned to you the slides earlier, the target of the government. So we're hoping that would be met, right? And then movement in bond market, as mentioned by your interest rate decision, in the US, how it could impact um, yields, um, which could impact equity risk premium, which could result to correction in growth stocks, right? So here in this slide, we are showing to you the, we are emphasizing the risks that could derail our expectation of economic recovery or V-shaped economic recovery. So yeah, inflation, significant rise in yields, right? Improving economic conditions or higher inflation expectation would allow monetary, monetary authorities to revert to neutral stance so, sooner rather than later, right? And then, of course, lower than expected rollout of vaccines. We showed to you the target and we showed and mentioned to you the target of the government. So that could be your basis, whether we are in line or we are slower than expected in terms of vaccine rollout, right? That could dampen the market sentiment moving forward. So that could be a good indicator of whether the market's rally could be sustainable if it ever rallies in the near future. And of course, expected easing of business restriction if it's slower than expected, right? That could dampen also sentiment. So what are our stock picks? So for those who are the first time listeners here, we are positive on the reopening winners. So question, why are we positive on the opening winners? Why? We are actually, um, Tightening uh, quarantine measures, right? Again, our, our, our PSI year end target, even our stock picks, we are looking ahead 12 to 24 months. If we ask ourselves in the next 12 to 24 months, should the, the question we should ask ourselves is in situation, Banatan, is it going to be worse or better? Right? And we are of the view that's likely within the next 12 to 24 months, better, right? And since we are of the view it's going to get better given the vaccine rollout na tayo, we are betting on economic reopening winners, right? Because that's where the most upside, most upside is. Because if we bet on the likes of, you know, the groceries right now, baka magi short term lang yung gain, right? So that's why we are recommending to, to be exposed heavily on the reopening winners. Again, this is for our long-term investors looking to invest at least in the next 12 to 24 months. So first is property, right? We expect a strong pickup in residential demand. Um, we're already seeing, you know, uh, tight inventory levels and we expect the companies, the property companies to address that. So they have to expedite their construction to, to address um, the bulk of demand there. So we expect higher reservation sales come, come this year, right? Um, in terms of the office, we expect stability in the office, right? Uh, we expect DPO demand to offset the unwinding of pogo exposures. And then on the mall for traffic, the rebound in mall for traffic is heavily hinged on the reopening of the economy. So 
on the first half of this year, it's safe to say that the residential and the office space will be the driver, or the, will will be the driver, right? And then the latter part of the year, and hoping at least, or hoping around second quarter, if kaya, you malls na yung magdala, right? Again, we're already rolling out our vaccine, so it's going to get better from here, at least in terms of, um, you know, the fear in terms of, you know, sentiment, kasi, di ba? And you name vaccine, and vaccine is the the panacea that solves the difficulty in the situation. And then for hotels, yeah, I mentioned for the hotels, naman, we expect uh, recovery to lag on the hotels because webinars like this are more cost efficient for, for the host and the attendees, right? So recovery will lag so hotels. So our, our topics, uh, properties, Ayala Land, 65%. Of its uh, operating income, that's earnings before interest and taxes, comes from the residential business, and we're positive in the residential business for the next 12 to 24 months. So that's for AL land. Our target price is 52. Again, huge upside. Will it reach by year end? Um, that's the that's a good question. But the thing here is, we're looking at the next 12 to 24 months, and by year end, if it does not reach 52. It's just a, a, a better opportunity for you to buy more. That's how we should look at target price. For SM Prime Holdings, we estimate reservation sales to pick up strongly this year by 20%. Of course, we were seeing resilient remittances. We're currently at a low interest rate environment and better consumer confidence ahead. That's what we are expecting. Again, next 12 to, 12 to 24 months. And of course, be, SM Prime being the biggest mall operator, so the, the successful vaccine rollout, um, the benefit from that one will be um, heavily will be heavily welcoming for SMPH. Okay, so it's actually welcome news na we know na yung Duterte is now allowing private companies to buy the vaccines on their own, right? We're actually hearing from other companies that are already buying from their own already. Okay. For our, so our last property pick is Robinson's Land. We, are, we have a target price of 28 pesos. So we expect Robinson's Land's earnings to actually exceed 2019 levels already this year because it has a project in China which is already contributing as we speak. So in Chengdu, China, the Bayung, one of the first countries to, you know, go back to nearly pre-COVID levels. So at least co-contribute in business niya overseas. And then, plus, we should add what we expect from the domestic side pa in the long run. So, target price is 28. For consumers, we cannot uh, stress enough that we're positive on, on consumer discretionary, right? With the, further, with the further easing of restrictions, hopefully, within the next 12 to 24 months, there should be pent-up demand that should boost store food traffic um, and alcohol beverage volumes, right? So for for FB, our target price is 81. Again, should there be a recovery in social gatherings, nighttime nightlife activities, FB is the is a is the best bet with a target price of 81 pesos. Okay, so we now turn more bullish on beer volumes. Should it uh should there be easing quarantine measures? So again, we have to be probably you're saying we've been mentioning this for several months already, but Again, we're not positive on these stocks for just one month. We're positive on them on the long term. So it's a matter of patience talaga. Like, um, it's a matter of patience talaga siya. So again, these are the opening winners. And what we always tell our clients is if you just take a look at the situation now, and if you bet on these reopening winners, once fully mag-recover na economy, once yung cases, 500 na lang, 100 daily. Probably the market has already reached 7,000 or mid-7 that time, right? So you, we've been hearing a lot of quotes. Probably a lot of you uh, like to hear the quotes na, like hearing quotes from Warren Buffett and one of which, right, um, is to invest when there's fear, right? And you have to be patient for it and Warren Buffett himself is actually being patient on his investments and that's what we are recommending to you guys na saan tayo mas kikita 
sa next 1 to 2 years, right? And then next for RHI, target price 88 pesos. For RHI, um, keep in mind, the main difference between RHI and RLC, sa RLC sa kanya yung lupa, sa RHI sa kanya yung stores inside. So, yung mga department stores, the toy stores, specialty stores, pet stores, yun, yun yung mga benefit from the further reopening of the economy. And what we like about RHI is it's sizable war chest and has been in a net cash position since its IPO. So yung cash position niya as of end September 2020 is 12.5 billion, right? So it can acquire other companies if it likes and well prepared for even post-pandemic. So our last, our last sector that we like is financials. So of course, should the economy recover, hindi siya may impossible without borrowing appetite picking up pace. So we expect a return of loan growth within the next uh, 12, 24 months. So again, we we'd just like to reiterate that we Metrobank is not part of this. It's not part of our stock picks because we are part of the group, but we have um, a research partner in Singapore, Development Bank of Singapore, um, which does a research on Metrobank and buy call siya six at sixty four pesos. And their main thesis is it's one of the it's the cheapest bank already and is poised for more upside. Um, and then it will tend to outperform in the sector in terms of share price moving forward. So what are our stock picks? If DBS stock pick is Metrobank, what are ours? So first is BDO. We think the, the sell-off in BDO shares is overdone. We expect a return of loan growth in 2021 and 2022, specifically 8 to 10, 8 and 10 percent respectively. Okay. Next is BPI. At we have a target price of 99 pesos. The key takeaway here is the exposure of BPI to the real estate sector, right? Um, the segment comprised roughly a quarter of its total loan book based on 2019 numbers. And as mentioned, we have a positive outlook on residential loans, given healthy underlying demand and our expectations of recovery in supply. So target price is 99. Lastly, our top pick um, amongst all our picks is SM Investments. So of course, we cannot be... Um, SM should always be... Uh, SM is reasonably our top pick because its exposure to property, retail, and banking, where it's number, where it's leading at, Right, will really capture the whole economic reopening. Right, so our target price is 1250. So, you will see in this slide, I will mention for all those listeners that we are showing right now our top picks with the, the share price as of today that's March 30, the target price, and the upside. Right, so our first, our top pick is SM with an upside of 29, nearly 29 percent. Ayala Land. Uh, for it, over 46%, SMPH over 26%, RLC nearly 56%, FB 35%, RHI 54%, BDO 44%, and for BPI 17.5% upside as of March 30. And then here on this slide, our model, our model port, this will tell you that as of today, March 30, um, if you if you buy our stock picks and weighted them accordingly to their market cap, their performance is negative 7.3% compared to PSEI performance of negative 8%, negative 8.3, so may 1% outperformance. If equal weighted naman, nearly the same um, at eight negative 8.3%. So we're hoping for further outperformance as the economy reopens. Kasi it, mga reopening winners to, so we expect them to widen their outperformance compared to the uh, compared to the um, consumer staples and the like. So yeah, now we will show you our traders playbook picks. So first one is Manila Water. Um, we've been positive on Manila Water for so long, so we we are um, contented that it's starting the share price starting to pick up already because. Its new concession agreement is nearing conclusion already. Actually, when we created this report, nearing conclusion pa lang. And then according to reports as of, I believe, Monday, con um, okay na, na, complete na yung agreement. Of course, the details are yet to be uh, disclosed. But nevertheless, um, yung agreement na yun, 
again, agreed upon by both Manila Water and the government. So it should be something Manila Water is, you know, somewhat um, satisfied at. Because keep in mind, last December 2019, they were really close to getting shut down. That's the threat, right, before. And right now, meron pang win-win agreement according to them. So that should be positive for Manila Water. And of course, once we get the details further, that should, we will be, we will better value the company na. Um, but right now, at least sentiment-wise, it's good for Manila Water. And also good for Manila. Sila na yung next na magkakaroon ng, ng concession agreement uh, with the government. Because si Manila owners nun, si, yung listed owners nun is si MPI and DMC. Okay. Our next pick is URC. URC naman. Oh, yeah. It's for URC kasi. We recognize na right now, again, this is traders playbook pick. So short term, at least... For URC, although we have a long-term target price of 178 for that one, it could be a hedge. And if you want it to be part of your portfolio, para lang, if kunyari mag-tighten your restrictions, meron kang consumer name na, mag, na somewhat COVID-19 play. That's URC. Yung mga brands na kasi yun yung mga parang pinapanic buy or hinahoard ng some people, right? So, and also... We expect earnings to turn momentum to be unaffected by the crisis. So yeah, so that's our point. And URC is on track for good years ahead. So it's somewhat of a COVID-19 play if you want to hedge your risk, if you want to buy 80%, if you want to allocate 80% of your portfolio to reopening winners, you could allocate 10, 20% to COVID-19 play para na hedging risk. Again, risk management is key to investment all the time. Okay, so there. So yeah, in this screen, you will see in traders playbook performance year to date. So nearly 50% na your performance from around 40% last month. But keep in mind, the performance is still um, better than the PSEI. 1.7% uh, compared to 7.5% uh, performance of PSEI, right? So despite more reports na wrong, positive pa rin year to date because we practice good risk management. Right, that's the that's what we can be proud of. Traders playbook. We practice good risk management. We have um, um, or the research team has uh, several advisors that we ask in terms of share price, diba? So di lang kami yung gumagawa. I mean, di lang kami yung you know nag nagdetermine talaga. So we we practice um, good risk management all the time. So you will see there yung mga some green yung mga some green yun yung Tama, because you will see there's some sell calls. Like si Mary Mart, the first table, the lowest. Mary Mart, kaya siya green kasi we, we had a sell call on Mary Mart. And tama siya, 19%. Diba? So, there. So yeah, of course, so we will we are proud to tell you the performance of Traders Playbook uh, back in 2020. We had a hit ratio of over 7 percent so more than seven reports out of ten tama right that's the hit ratio of course that was not a fluke because last 2019 nearly seven uh percent trend nearly 70 percent trend so we're hoping it would be sustained this year um so there so okay so this is the time we answer your question so i will first answer uh the ones in facebook and with over 200 votes First question that we have is AC Energy a good long term investment? Would you recommend to avail its follow on offering? That's FOO. If you already own the stock or just buy after the offer. Okay, so, so just to differentiate about we see we have AC, AC Energy had um, SRO and FOO. Si FOO kasi para siyang follow on offering is like a second IPO, right? Even if you have, even if you don't have the stock you could avail of the FOO. That's the difference between an SRO and FOO. Sa so SRO, you have to have the shares of AC Energy para maka-avail ng SRO. Sa so FOO, hindi. You could buy sa FOO price. And yung FOO price, yung pa yung to be determined, right? For AC Energy, it's uh, it's malawak yung range, eh. if I'm not mistaken, it's between 6 to 8, 20 pesos. So, is AC Energy a good long ter good long term investment? I I will have to say yes. Good AC Energy is a good long term investment given the trend globally of shifting towards renewable energy. Um, even even the Philippines is is already beginning a shift 
hindi na nagtatanggap ng new coal plant power coal power plant projects right puro renewables na um actually the goal may, may goal pa yung Department of Energy to have a 50% renewable energy um, consumption by 2040 if I'm not mistaken so AC Energy keep in mind it's a regional renewable play hindi lang sa Philippines it has power plants in Australia India Vietnam so it will it would be a good long term investment talaga it will I, I would go as far as to say if it sustain its growth path continue it if it it's able to meet its plans it has a huge potential to be part of the PSEI um, in the long term probably in, at least in less than five or seven years right so the market cap is getting there already diba? so yun. so would you recommend to avoid its FOO it depends on your uh, it depends on what price are you comfortable in but if ako kasi may technique, if I'm really positive on a long on a company for a long term, I would buy at lower price. I would buy less shares at higher price, diba? So I'd buy if it dips para lang malowering average cost ko. Because average averaging down, in my opinion, it's not good if you're trading stock. If na break na yung support, if na hit na yung cut loss level mo, don't average down. You sell. But if it's a long term investment, it depends on it depends on you, right? If you buy a stock. In your mind, you have a story on why you bought the stock. If the story has not changed and it dips, and you, and you still see growth prospect moving forward, you continue to buy lang. If nag iba na yung story, di na, di na beneficial sa ganitong aspect and the like, diba? di na siya good for long term investment. So that's my basic tip lang. So yeah, probably if it's around 6 pesos. Yeah, it's good to avail FOO 6 or 7. Go ahead. So, ASIN is a good long term investment in my view. Second question. Yeah, so given the recent declaration of ECQ for NCR plus bubble, are we seeing the PSA to retest its 2020 low? If, if the recent declaration of ECQ alone, or even the extension of the ECQ um, for NCR alone, is yung making near term negative um like news sa near term we will not we we there's a high probability that we will not retest the 2020 low if my other reasons pa besides the ECQ diba? if my other blocks want other an uh, other unfortunate unforeseen event possible but if yung ECQ alone lang we don't think it will reach 2020 low keep in mind when we reach 4,000 last year, yun yung pataas pa yung COVID, we don't know what will happen next. Wala pang vaccine at all. We, we didn't have any, um, we didn't have any, con the globe, the, the world didn't have any concrete plans. It was mostly on protection mode lang. Diba? Quarantine measures lang yung, yung main solution. But right now, we have the vaccine. We have several vaccines. Right? So it's just a matter of yung, yung, Market volatility today, right now, it's mostly on kailan ba magre-recovery in businesses, right? It, it, will it be delayed or not? So, yung peak ng fear last year was mostly because we didn't know what to do after. Ano ba yung COVID na to? Masasolve ba to agad? Right now, we have mas gamay na ng companies what to do pag ganitong restrictions, right? So there's a low probability that we will retest 2020 low if ECQ alone is the negative near term um, risk. Okay. So yeah. Another question, yeah. So this are, this is in line with our um, call of 84 to 86 by year end. So what is our view now in short term, mid term, long term trend of PSA? Are we still seeing 8K projection by December 2021? So short term is pretty. Uh, Actually, I would like to, for the short term, I would like to um, see what the companies are saying. It's hard to predict what will happen in the short term, right? But in the long term, definitely with the vaccine rollout already being there, with more vaccine expected to arrive, especially in June and July, among other brands of vaccine, long the long term trend is... Um, Better, definitely better. 
right? So short term, uh, it's hard to predict. But while the market is, while yung volatility range, at least ng market is medyo tumatighten right now, di ba? Within 6, uh, 6, 5. It's good to accumulate na. It's good to start to begin accumulating. What we, what we also, what we all uh, always tell our clients is don't, huwag niyo ubusin yung cash, right? Right now, you just always have some cash aside to save for a rainy day just in case, just in case it gets worse, right? So that's good risk management. Good risk management pa rin naman. Kahit positive kami sa market, so we, we should always pra- practice good risk management. Set some cash aside, but begin accumulating the open winners. That's our main view. So I would like to also to also explain yung view namin is a fundamental projection, right? That or yung view namin is that should be the value of the market by year end. If that is not the value of the market by year end, meaning may upside pa. That's how we should look at it. Diba? It's not that, oh, hindi na reach yung 8K, mali. Right? Our view is, that should be the value of the market given the factors that we um, take into account early this year. Right? Okay, nag-ECQ, baka i-lower namin a bit. But you won't lower it too. 6,000, 5,000. Malaki pa rin yung upside even if kahit ano man i-lower namin or any adjustments that we have. Okay? So the bottom line here is the opening winners, kahit ano, kahit ano pang year-end projection namin, the opening winners pa rin yung main um, recommendation namin. Right? So that's, that should be, uh, that's the, that's our view. And we understand if you have a different view, but we would like to reiterate that we have a data-driven approach that we think Within the next 12 to 24 months, the opening winners will will give you the most um, profit. So next question is, what are the 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 short term, long term opportunities we can still consider in this market condition? So yeah, for for short term, take a look at our traders' Facebook reports. We have several. Um, we we are targeting the mga new specific um, names like the Basi Manila Water, MPI, mga mga benefit in the short term, probably good for long term then but at least for the short term we see market um we see price action to outperform the basi keep in mind see metro pacific vanilla water outperform so far this week and sila yung weekly picks namin right so please take a look at our weekly market blueprint report that we release every monday morning and our traders playbook report that we release every um assuming a five day trading week we release four to five days we, we release four to five times Good. Another good question. How should we position ourselves in this market condition as an investor and as a trader? As an investor, our main recommendation is to again slowly begin to slowly, you know, uh, accumulate mga opening winners. And as a trader, this is the type of market condition that you should follow your cut loss levels at all costs. Kasi mabilis yung bumaba, right? Nakita niyo yung mga, nakita niyo yung mga index, index names, right? Sabay-sabay nag-break ng support, di ba? So, even if, kasabay ng mga third liners pa. So, if you don't follow yung support level, or if you don't follow your cut loss levels, um, kakainin ka ng market, right? So, as a trader, follow your, follow your trading plan at all, uh, no matter what. Right? As an investor, set some cash aside, but begin to buy reopening winners already, right? Mahirap na mapag-iwanan if we just wait for co- cases to come down. Kasi if cases start to come down, aakit na yung market yan agad. If mag- from ECQ, maging, maging GCQ yan ulit, aakit yung market yan. So, it's good to buy when there's a peak of fear. Kasi wala pang buyers that time eh. Sa'yo yung presyo if you want, right? Hindi ko, hindi ko yung naghahabol. That's what we are, that's what, that's what we're here to tell you, diba? Okay, so next set of questions. Yeah, I think we shared to you na the impact of create. Um, actually, mostly beneficial siya to almost all other companies except yung BPOs. But we will have to wait for any final vetoed provisions. But for now, most industries will benefit. So what are what is our take on fill invest rate? 
for film investigate, we have to wait pa on, on the specific details. But in terms of the office space that you would like to list, we like it already solely. As of now, palang we like it solely because of its limited exposure to pogos. Okay. Uh, but probably limited the upside to DDMP besides the market sentiment was the fact that it has a significant exposure to pogos. Again, the positive thing about DDMP is it owns the land. So, meron kang upside yield from both rental income growth and land value appreciation. But probably what yung nangibabaw sa IPO week niya was the fact that yung market sentiment was not that positive at that time and yung heavy exposure niya sa POGOs. So, for Phil Invest Street, very limited exposure niya sa POGOs, sa properties that it plans to list. So, so far positive siya. So, we expect stable um, yield from that one. So next question, is there a possibility that AC Engine Converge will be part of the PSEI on July? So actually, every Feb and August, uh, every Feb and August yung rebalancing ng PSEI. So we will have to further evaluate. Converge kasi has a company to be listed sa PSEI has to be, has to be listed at least one year. When was Converge listed pa? Nevertheless, we will try to get we will try to get, get back to you on that. We actually try to publish a report um, on our predictions of PSI if we can. Um, so yeah, so for Converge, if listed na siya more than one year by August, so baka meron siyang potential. So we will have to get back to you on that one. Okay, so next question is... Okay, next question is fundamental technical insights on ICT converge in nickel. Very specific questions. Probably I'll answer, I'll, I'll focus more on the fundamental muna. Um, on ICT, ICT is a good, um, it, we, we, we were impressed by how ICT performed um, despite the pandemic. Guess a global exposed stock, she, right? Um, so, nag -re rebound the earnings niya right now because of the rebound in global trade. Actually, naglalag pa sa kanya is yung, yung business niya sa Manila. Business sa Philippines as a whole. So, fundamentally ICT, fundamentally ICT is a good investment. It's just that the upside may be limited compared to consensus. And again, you can see the consensus. If you take a look at our consensus um, corner report that we publish every last day of the trading week. So, there. For Converge, good prospects and to Converge, um, Again, it's a, it's a big company, yet malaki pa growth prospect. So, Converge is a uh, good, uh, Converge is actually a good uh, hedge for risk along with PLDT and Globe. For Nickel naman, we've been always positive on, on Nickel prices because meron siyang underlying demand from the growth ng electric vehicle sector. So, Nickel is a, uh, Nickel is um, a good long-term investment. It's just that the near-term risk lang niya is if the mass yung yield um, negatively affect, affected yung commodity prices like nickel. So there. Wow, good question. So tiniting nam parin daw ba yung pag when you buy a stock, tiniting nam parin ba daw ba yung debt to equity for investment? Yes. For investment, yes. Ano po ba yung acceptable ratio for long-term investment? Again, when you take a look at certain indicators, you always compare them within the sector. But generally, a one um, a one to one point five debt to equity is respectable. Of course, what is preferred is below one. But kasi the thing here is, if you don't see if yung debt to equity ng isang company is below one, pero hindi siya nag-grow, baka underinvested siya. Kasi hindi siya nangyayaram for growth. Eh. At the end of the day, you have to compare now the the earnings of the company, the return on equity, and then take a look at debt to equity, right? If in debt to equity, um, respectable, not the highest in the sector or not above two, two is quite the threshold, kasi. Um, but again, not depends on the sector. So if isa siya sa pinakamababa sa sector, tapos yung growth niya consistent, na sustain naman niya and pataas, that's a good kind of investment. So there. Okay, so next question is 
um, how does the demand for Semicon for 2021? Okay, so actually right now, there is a shortage of chip stocks. Yung mga semiconductors will actually benefit from that one. Globally, yeah, may global shortage. Um, yung mga electric vehicles actually, even sa China, um, si NIO, um, nag-halt siya ng production for five days because of the shortage of semiconductor, of, of semiconductor yung mga chips, chip, may shortage sa chips. It will benefit semicon stocks, the likes of AMI, kasi meron kong upward pressure sa price. And yung dem if you just produce a semiconductor, basically there's a high chance na may meet yung demand target mo, right? So, in the near term, yun yung magbe-benefit. Like AMI, is probably Certec also. Uh, but we prefer AMI kasi mas globally exposure right now. So, there. For CLI, the next question is about CLI. CLI is actually a good growth um uh, you know, growth growth company in the property. Maganda strategy niya na exposed siya sa Vismin region. Um, actually, it's it's competing very well uh, with um with other cities. May, may, may mga certain cities lang na mas matas pa rin si the likes of Ayala Land. But nevertheless, ano na siya, uh, big player siya sa Vismin region. And it's poised to expand further, right? It has the funds to expand further. So, CLI is a good, um, it's a good um, growth company that you can invest in the long term. Okay, so the last question that we have sa Facebook is, what are the positive uh, implications or even negative of having more REITs in the local uh, bourse? Actually, well, yeah, competition is one. Competition is one. Um, but kasi... Yung habol mo sa REITs are dividend yields. Eh. So yeah, baka yung may competition kasi yields probably if you just want to invest in one REIT, pipiliin mo yung mas, may, mas mataas, right? But in terms of investment industry as a whole, it's good to have more REITs para we can have more options. And it's a, it's a good way rin for companies companies to to raise capital for expansion because the proceeds that they, they will use, that the proceeds that they will get, 90%, ano yun eh, kailangan at least 90% mali invest locally right so it's a win-win situation so there okay so now let's start to um take a look at the companies uh the questions rather uh in the chat box okay So uh, our take on P gold. So for P gold, um, it's a good like URC. It's a good uh, hedge rent if you want to. The we recommend the opening winners, but a good risk management strategy is to also hedge your risk from time all the time. So one way of hedging your risk is two ways of hedging your risk is first is buying dividend yielding stocks or dividend yielding companies. Another one is um, buying buying companies na opposite ng ng nature of the stocks that bulk of your portfolio is exposed at. So, diba, we recommend your opening winners. You could hedge your risk by buying COVID-19 plays like si Pure Gold, diba, and URC. So, Pure Gold is a good um, it's a good company that you could add to your portfolio. Stable earnings. Tapos, um, it captures pa both um, target market, yung low target, low to mid income by its Pure Gold stores and yung high and yung higher uh, income market mo via SNR. So, yeah. Okay, so good question. Why is SEBPAC not included in the long-term pick? So, yeah, for SEBPAC kasi probably we'd like to evaluate that further. Kasi like hotels, we expect in travel to lag the recovery. Magre-recover siya definitely, but we expect, ano ba yung saan pa tayo kikita within the next one to two years? Dun tayo sa may cash, di ba? Na hindi, not taking a loss, right? So, that, those are the companies that we are recommending muna for the meantime. Sebpak, you should put it on our watch list definitely. But right now, kasi especially sa Philippines, medyo dampen pa yung travel activities, right? So, malilimit muna yung activities at least sa basic needs or what we do locally, right? Property, nga. property, retail, banking. So that's why we're positive on those. For Manila Water, yeah, you could buy that or you could buy it at pullbacks uh, around 15 pesos.
sorry, yung question is, can I still buy MWC or there is a sale already? You can buy a bit and buy on pullbacks uh, nearly 15 if you want. Yeah, you, okay, good question. Given the recent news regarding Rason's case in New York, well, if you've been following Bloomberg, meron siyang case na, di ba, involved pa nga siya sa RCBC daw. So RCBC, yung Bangladesh, Bank Heist, and the like. Um, but it will all, it will all, it will not be significantly, it will not, I, I, I don't even think it will affect the likes of ICT and MWC. Um, even bloom at certain uh, scenario. At the end of the day, if, if they will have to pay a fine, yung main question kasi, if they will have to pay a fine, saan kukunin yung pera? Diba? If hindi naman sa companies kukunin, hindi siya maapektuhan. Right? If, if walang penalty to shut down the companies, hindi siya maapektuhan. So, there. Okay, so good question. What um the market seem not to overreact on the current ECQ situation. Why do you think so? Because of the create law. Because of the create law, where the buyers actually yesterday, parang mag net foreign buy for for the first time um in, in weeks, right? Because of the create law, right? Because create law is a long term positive catalyst. Eh. Imagine mababa yung, cor mababa yung corporate income tax. So, tataas yung kita ng companies. They will use that for more expansion. Mas mabilis sila lalaki. It, it, it also helps small businesses kasi mas malaki pa nga yung pagbaba ng, ng income tax sa kanila. That's why they're not reacting on the current ECQ situation. Good question to answer is if mag-extend man. And how long will it extend? But nevertheless, nevertheless, Basta yung goal, if, if bumaba man yung cases and then at, at the same time, dumadami na vaccine more reasons for us to buy yung reopening winners. It tells us that this is a short-term pain, long-term gain for our reopening winners. Yeah, so good question, the bus that we are entering down the mining season. So what's our take now on nickel stocks, nickel F&I? Um... Especially that they can still operate even with the ECQ, yeah. Well, the thing here is uh, the 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 interesting thing the thing the interesting thing that we got from the earnings call of mining companies is that they can actually afford um, if bumaba man yung nickel prices um, like ten percent um, because they're seeing rebound in demand, especially in China, um, and also. And also, they have this inventory level already. They have good inventory levels already. And the thing here is, basta respect or basta hindi gaano bumaba yung nickel prices, tapos stable yung, um, yung deliveries nila, they can manage. So for nickel prices, it's a good indicator talaga if you base it sa nickel prices. Yung mga nickel stocks, good to... Parang it's, it's a both fundamental technical play that you could... The technicals mean nickel prices, you, and then you combine it with the fundamental, long-term fundamental prospects of nickel names. So, siguro malaki ni inaket na nickel stock, so meron siyang probably due for more pullback. But nevertheless, the, the long-term prospects are still there. Nandun yung demand for electric vehicles. And the electric vehicles, if I can tell you, is just getting started. Right? Just getting started globally. Diba? Sa mga developed, developed countries pa lang siya, mostly exposed, right? And with climate change, mas yung mga investments ngayon leaning towards ESG na eh, environmental, social, government, governance uh, focus names na di, yung mga solving the climate change, the problems right now. So we see a shift talaga to electric vehicles in the long term, di ba? So at least, siguro yung magbe-benefit muna doon yung nickel stocks kasi hanggat wala pang electric vehicles dito, yung magbe-benefit muna na local companies or yung nickel stocks kasi sila yung supply ng raw materials to create the electric vehicle. Yung, yung lithium battery, di ba? So, there. So, good question. Okay. Why didn't MWC give out dividends last 2020? Because they were evaluating kasi yung new concession agreement. Right? Um, they mentioned that it, um, 
it all depends kasi on their their views sa concession agreement if beneficial for them or not so probably we're hoping since may deal na for 2021 baka may dividends na siya good question another good question is will hedge fund crashes in the US affect the financial sector in the Philippines well there are right now kasi diba right now dapat tignan na yung mga risk management um measures ng hedge funds and even other funds because if this blows up it could be you know it could be another 2008 scenario but right now that is not yet the case right now that's not yet the case but i think we should look out for news na we should look out for news moving forward na ininvestigate na yung other risk parameters ng hedge funds para hindi ma- di sumabog right because the the what happened with the hedge fund um Asia Ghost ba yun? Um, capital um, fund management by Bill Wong. Um, nag margin call siya, right? Tapos, what happened was sa mga banks like Nomura and Credit Suisse, they actually expecting to take a significant loss because of that. Diba? So, if there are bigger hedge funds na naka margin, tapos sumabog bigla, that could affect other banks. So, that yun yung worst case scenario. So, what we want to hear now is a investigation series parameters in other companies para ma-manage na ngayon pa lang. Yun. So, okay. So, last two questions. Okay. Um... What's your view in investing sa global market? Well, actually, eh, a- ako kasi maganda mag-invest sa global market uh, because you can earn from when the stocks go down and e- when the stocks go up and go down, di ba? Mas, of course, kailangan mo na mas maging maingat sa shorting. But nevertheless, investing global market is a, is a good recommendation if you can afford. So, yeah, I'm, I'm good investing in global markets. Ako lang, I'm looking at growth stocks there um mga yung mga i'm investing for the future um, in the global markets yung mga unique type of sectors so i'm i'm also using my technical analysis to time my entry because right now kasi nagko-correct yung mga growth stocks there so there so last question to just to you know capture both m wide and macro asia for m wide kasi Keep in mind, mega wide, meron siyang airport operations, meron siyang construction. And the construction is recovering as we speak. So it's good to it's good to buy a bit of mega wide, but you have to be patient kasi yung airport operations is not yet um it's not yet, you know, picking up because tourism related, diba. So that's for mega wide. For macro Asia, kasi ano siya air for air, air, air plane maintenance, air air catering, right? So, matagal pa recovery niya. I would focus more on MY if that is the case. So, there. So, thank you all for listening in to our uh, Philippine Stock uh, Market uh, monthly wrap-up for the month of March 2021. We hope to hear from you again um, in April. So, of course, at the end of the day, uh, take, um, take care and happy investing. Of course, with First Metrosec, it's always hashtag your future first. So, thank you.